Okay, so this is a this is a painting of a church called Bradford Samuel. The uh, church was uh, recently totally gutted by fire, um, suspected arson. Um, so I, I'm just basically doing a bit of a, a bit of a painting, taking from photographs of the sort of the the ruined shell that's left. Um, and ba I'm going to donate this to the church, and they can auction it off or whatever, and uh, hopefully raise some funds to get themselves back on the uh, on the straight and narrow again. It's a real shame that a lot of our uh, churches are being targeted in this way, either by vandals or by metal thieves, and. Uh, it's something that, that it seems to be getting more and more so. It's getting to the stage where nothing seems to be um, sacred anymore. Uh, memorial plaques have been taken. And War memorial plaques, all that, all that sort of thing, just seems to be total open, open game now. It's a real shame. So I'm just, um, I'm just, just sort of getting a bit of a feel for what's going on here. There's jagged bits of wood sticking up, and one thing and another. I quite like this gable end here. In the photograph I've got, this is very dark, and there's just some remains of the window, which I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to put in, but and then I'm thinking I'm going to contrast it and put this against a very dark background, that I get a very light background. Anyway, we'll see what happens. So I've just been using a, a quite a fine pen there just to sketch in some just some faint lines. I'm just going to I've got a Pentel marker, Pentel um, brush pen here. It's got a brush nib. Nylon fibers, very strong, very uh, capable of rough treatment, and it contains cartridge with um, waterproof, light fast ink, dries quickly. And the great thing about this is it it's, it's, it handles like a brush, or even a piece of charcoal, depending on how you use it. So it's um, it's a nice piece of uh, it's a nice piece of kit, not not too expensive, very useful for sketching. I carry this around with when I'm out and about sketching. Now we've got some gravestones in the foreground here, so I'm going to I'm going to indicate some of these. Nothing too nothing too major, but just just a, those trees here. Now you see how I'm scrubbing the side of the side of the brush pen here and it's producing a foliage effect for me. This is one of the great things about these um, these brush pens, especially the decent ones. If you, if you buy sort of quite cheap ones, the refillable ones, they don't always behave um, very predictably, but these, um, these with the, uh, the ink cartridges are superb. You can see there the, sort of the range of textures you can get just purely by altering the pressure on the pen. Okay, so we've got we're getting a bit of a getting a bit of a feel now for what's happening there. So what I'm gonna do now next in my armory a bit of old candle. Nothing fancier than that. This is very good for putting texture on. A lot of you will know about using this stuff, but uh, some people haven't come across it before. You, you can use it just for creating texture, you can use it for um, creating lines, shape. Um, it's, it's very versatile, surprising. One bit of old candle and you can do all sorts of things with it. I'm just using it for providing a bit of texture on the wall here, a bit in the sky. 
Um, that's probably going to be sufficient. And I'm just going to just do a few shapes in the foreground here again of headstones. So that when I start inking over it, they might come through. And we'll see what happens. Right, bushes. I use any old brushes really. Um, a lot of my mixed media work it takes a lot of a lot out of brushes. So if you buy really expensive ones, um, you can find yourself spending a lot of money having to replace them. I mean these are, these were just out of a cheap set um, from a big um, retail place. I think they were four in a four in a pack. I think it was about a five or something like that. Um, they're designed for craft use so that you can use them with different paints and once they get shot at you can throw them away and get some more. Got some clear water, just chuck some water on here. And then next in my armory, Parker's Quink. It's a um, normally use for uh, fountain pens or uh, dip pens or whatever uh, you can get it in blue this is black the black's good because when you use it over water it starts to uh, break up into subtle shades and you can get some quite nice effects so I'm just whacking in here with a, a bit of a dramatic sky I said I wanted to get quite a dark sky in this bit so I'm just applying it straight over that, white, that um, water wash that we saw. So quite a nice dramatic, I do like my dramatic skies. I'm a bit known for it. I'm going to leave leave it quite light there around that gable end because the gable end is going to be quite dark. There we go. So you can see how that's starting to break up. You're getting some nice subtle blues coming out here, some ochres appearing. Um, some some greys. This is all just purely from the black Parker's Quink um, reacting with the water and splitting up. Okay, next I'm going to go in with some yellow ochre. Calligraphy ink. I'm just going to apply it to the wall areas. Not too, not too fussed about this. Just whacking it in, seeing what happens. It meets the uh, the ink that's already there and goes over the wax resist I'm also going to use this in the foreground because it's I, I quite like to use a limited palette uh, I have been down the road of using lots of different colours. Um, it's not easy to control if you have a huge, great palette of colour. Um, 
a lot of beginners make the mistake of rushing out and buying a beginner's set of paints with two dozen, three dozen, sometimes even four dozen paints, different shades and hues in it, and then spend most of the time scratching their head wondering which of the six shades of green or eight shades of blue or whatever they should be using for a particular part of the painting. I'm, I'm more of a let's just suggest things let's just suggest things and see what happens it's surprising what you can get away with with very little so we've got some colour bashed in there now and I'm just going to go back in with some of the Parker's Quink again because I want to darken my gable end right off so here we go, here we go this is the smoke blackened gable end against that lighter bit of sky it also provides a bit of contrast against those headstones in the foreground which works quite nicely well there we are, it's looking a bit a bit more uh, like it So as you can see, it's starting to uh, starting to take shape. Just put a bit more uh, suggestion of background in there, just to uh, create a bit more depth. So that's uh, that's quite wet in certain parts of the paper now. So I'll probably just have to let that uh, dry off a bit. You can see there where how that gable end is now forming quite a feature. That's what I uh, I wanted. The uh, there's something quite um, there's quite something quite symbolic about that very stark shape against the lighter sky. So I'm just going to uh, go in now with a little bit of a little bit of blue just in this section. I'm uh, I'm one for moody skies, um, but I think in this case I, I want to create a, a certain sense of you know it's it's quite a dark moody piece, but I want to create a certain sense of there's a, possibly a bit of hope so I'm just going to create a little bit of blue sky just so we've got quite a nice contrast going on there with the with the dark dark sky this side and then the blue sky appearing on the other side
Okay, so the uh, ink's finally dried out now. Um, the sky's finally settled down. Um, we've got a nice bit of texture coming through with the wax resist there. Um, the gable ends nice and dark against that light section of sky, which is what I wanted. Um, I've just gone back in and put a little bit more uh, uh, detail in the uh, ruined window in that um, gable wall there. Uh, and I've then finally gone over with a bit of oil pastel just to create a bit of texture and a bit of contrast um, a bit of yellow ochre and a bit of uh, purple um, purple contrast nicely against the yellow ochre of the uh, the ink wash as well um, and then I'm just going to finally just put a few a few blades of grass in here just to just add a bit more to the foreground I think that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So quite a desolate scene, but hopefully the blue sky adds a little bit of um, hope to the picture, and uh, hopefully the painting itself um, will do some good for the church. Uh, final job: quick signature in the corner, or initial anyway. So that's it. That's uh, Radford Samuel Church burnt out. Um, that will be winging its way down to the uh, to the church for them to use as they wish. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's my first um, how-to video. I hope you found it useful. Um, you're very welcome to uh, visit my website. It's uh, cobbybrook.co.uk or just put Cobbybrook into uh, the search on Facebook and you should find my Facebook page. You're very welcome to come and join me on my Facebook page. Um, where you'll see all my paintings and all the latest work. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I hope you join me again soon.